revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Good evening and welcome to our Sunday evening Bible study. It is Sunday, October the 4th, 2020. And we are so thankful for your interest in studying the Bible. And we're so happy tonight that you've chosen to join us as we open up God's Word together. My name is Mark Howell. I'm the preacher for the Midway Church of Christ. Uh, we at the Midway Congregation would like to invite you to be a part of one of our Sunday morning services. Currently, we're meeting at 930 in our auditorium. Then again at 1030 in our fellowship hall. And we would invite you to be a part of either one of those services. Both of them have the same lesson being presented. We have a couple of different songs, different song leaders, but we would be more than happy for you to be a part of one of those two services. We also invite you to be a part of our Wednesday evening Bible study. We're studying uh, a lesson or at least a series right now that we're calling for such a time as this. And what we're doing is studying through the book of Esther in the Old Testament and we're seeking to make application of that book into our lives so that we can serve in our time uh, and, and do things, hopefully, that will be helpful to our, our own nation. And uh, we hope that you'll join us online on Wednesday nights at 6.30 as we continue this study. Appreciate so many who have come in, commented about it, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you in regard to it. As you know, over the past few weeks, we've been talking about the church. And last week, we talked about the worship of the church. This is the second week that we had done that. And uh, what we looked at last week is the fact that sometimes God in the Bible, as we read through the Bible, God was not pleased when people tried to worship Him. And we believe that to be true today as well because of that example or those examples that we find within the Word of God. We talked about Cain and how God accepted Abel's worship, accepted Abel's sacrifice, and rejected Cain's. We also talked about Nadab and Abihu from the Old Testament and how that they sought to offer strange fire before the Lord, profane fire before the Lord. God caused that to come out and consume them. And so we looked at those things. But not only is God the object and the aim of our worship, we also noted last week that He is the one who sets the standard for our worship. And so let's begin our lesson tonight. We want to continue our study of, of the worship of the church. But what we want to do at the beginning of our lesson tonight is to answer a couple of questions after we read some passages, uh, just like we've done in the past. But uh, we'll continue that at the beginning of our lesson tonight. And then we'll make some additional observations toward the end of our lesson. Now, again, we ask that you take out your copy of God's Word and study along with us. And as you do that, we ask that you turn to the book of Acts chapter 2 at verse number 42 in the New Testament. Acts chapter 2, verse number 42. And there we read these words. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Now what we're reading about here in Acts chapter 2 is those who had become Christians beginning there at the day of Pentecost and continuing from that day forward. But we're reading about those who had become disciples of Jesus and uh, were seeking to do the things that were good and right in His sight. And so we read about some of the things that they did. Now, the question that we want to answer, and it's taken directly from the passage, but the Bible says the disciples devoted themselves to what four things? What four things did the Bible say that they devoted themselves to? Um, if you're reading from the King James Version, you may see that it's not necessarily the word devoted themselves to, but they, uh, in that uh, 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 translation of the Word of God, they continued steadfastly in these four things. But what were they? Well, again, there are four of them. Number one, the apostles' teaching or the apostles' doctrine. 
and in the fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. And so as we look at that, this is something that the disciples of the first century did. And so that leads to our second question, which is this. Will we be pleasing to God if we devote ourselves to these same things? Will we be pleasing to God if we devote ourselves to these things? And as we look at that, the answer would have to be yes, because as we look at their example, it seems that God was well pleased with them, and they left that example for you and for me. Now, as we'll be seeing over the next few weeks, these things that they continued steadfastly in or devoted themselves to are avenues by which God expects us to worship Him. And we'll be talking about these things over the next few weeks. Now let's go to another passage, look at the book of Luke chapter 22, and we'll read together from, uh, from chapter 22, verses 19 and 20. Luke 22, verses 19 and 20. This is on the night before His crucifixion, the Bible says, And He, that is Jesus, and He took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and gave it to them, that is, the apostles who were gathered together with Him in that upper room. He took it and He broke it, and He gave it to them, saying, This is My body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. And so as we look at that, we note some things. And the first thing, uh, first question, I should say, that we want to, to look at and think about is this. In that statement that we just read from the book of Luke, did Jesus command his disciples to partake of the Lord's Supper? Now we see him taking the bread and we see him taking the cup. And we understand from not only the book of Luke, but uh, Matthew and, and other places. We'll go in just a little while to the, to the book of 1 Corinthians, which alludes back to this very setting. But did Jesus command His disciples to partake of the Lord's Supper? And the answer to that, as we look at it, is yes. Now let's think about that for a second. Jesus did not say, if you partake of this do it in remembrance of me. He simply said, and it's translated for us in this way, do this in remembrance of me. In the original writing, that is in the form of a command. It's not something that they just should remember to do, but this is something that they were, it was imperative for them to do. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 at verse number 16. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 16. There Paul writes and says, The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Now we're reading from the English Standard Translation. But if we were to go to the new, or rather the King James Translation, which many have, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16 says, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? And so, participation in, communing with. Now, here's our question. The cup is the communion or the participation of the what of Christ? Now that first that we read there in verse 16 is that it is, the cup is, the communion or participation of the blood of Christ. And then secondly, the, the question is, the bread is the communion or the participation in the what of Christ? Well, again, as we look at the passage, we understand that it is the communion or the participation in the body of Christ. And so as we think about the Lord's Supper, the cup and the, uh, and the bread, it is significant to us because it is a part, not literally speaking, but a representation of the blood and the body of Christ. And so when we partake of it, we are 
indeed to consider the, the body and the blood of Christ. And we'll have more to say about that in just a few minutes. Look at another passage, Acts chapter 20 at verse number 7. Acts chapter 20 at verse number 7. There the Bible says, On the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them, intending to depart on the next day, and he prolonged his speech until midnight. Now I want you to notice here that Paul and Luke, who is writing for us the book of Acts, uh, he said, we were there on the first day of the week when we were gathered together to do something, to break bread. They gathered together on the first day of the week for something, the breaking of bread, uh, representative, of, of course, of, uh, of the communion, of the Lord's Supper as we think about it. But here's something that I want you to, to think about. Here's our question. When God told the Israelites in Exodus chapter 20 at verse 8 to remember the Sabbath, did He mean for them to keep every Sabbath? Now what does the book of Exodus chapter 20 at verse 8 say? It simply says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now again, let's look at the question. When God told the Israelites in Exodus chapter 20 at verse 8, to remember the Sabbath, did he mean for them to keep every Sabbath? Well, logic and uh, a study through the Word of God would, uh, would suggest to us, yes, he intended for them to keep every single one of them. Now, when those Christians met upon the first day of the week to eat the Lord's Supper, did they do that on the first day of each week or the first day of every week? Uh, we were told to do this in remembrance of Jesus, and we know that the reason that these uh, folks came together, these disciples of Jesus came together, the very purpose was to break bread, to observe the communion. Now, did they do that each week? Well, as best we can tell from the Word of God, the answer to that would be yes. Should Christians today, this is our next question, should Christians today eat the Lord's Supper upon the first day of the week? Well, that's what they did in the first century, yes. Well, let me add uh, something here, and I want you to think about it. Which first day of the week? Which first day of the week? Wh which Sabbath day were the Israelites of old to keep? Which first day of the week are we to meet together and to partake of the Lord's Supper? Well, just like the Israelites of old, all of them, every single one. And so those are some questions that have to do with worship and in particular the Lord's Supper. Now, what I want us to do in the remaining time that we have together tonight is to explore some additional thoughts regarding the Lord's Supper itself. We'll explore two different avenues. Uh, let's first think about what Paul says in regard to the Lord's Supper. Paul discusses the Lord's Supper and uh, in doing so, he discusses the purpose of the Lord's Supper uh, to a great degree. Now, when we do that, one of the things that Paul suggests to us is that we are to take a backward look. When we observe the Lord's Supper upon the first day of the week, we are to take a backward look. Go with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's look at verses 23 through 25. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 23 through 25. Paul writes and says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when He was betrayed took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember I said a little while ago we would come back to that same thought that's mentioned in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. He goes on in verse 25 and says, In the same way also... He took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now consider this. Think about your ancestors. Sometimes we are diligent in going back and, and, and trying to dig up our family tree and, and, and see, you know, if we can... Uh, uh, find out who, who our family was who came before us. 
for the most part, ancestors are forgotten, are they not? Most people don't know very far back if, um, if they know their grandparents and great-grandparents or perhaps even their great-great-grandparents, we would consider them, you know, to, to, to be well-versed in their family history. And in reality, it goes on farther than that. And so ancestors are sometimes forgotten. What about high school yearbooks? When was the last time you looked at your high school yearbook? You know, I don't even know if I remember everybody that I went to high school with. Several that I do, some that I see upon occasion. But, but what about our high school yearbooks? They get tossed to the side and gather dust along with other photo albums, maybe of vacations past or whatever. And, and so we tend to forget about things, don't we? But once, yet, once each week, we are pausing and remembering that Jesus died for us. You see, we're looking backward. Uh, we're pausing and remembered that He suffered in my place. We're looking backward. We're pausing and remembering that He died for me, and so I owe Him a debt that I could never repay. You see, we're looking backward. And, and as we look backward, I suggest we would do well to concentrate on that abused body. Uh, in, the, uh, in the first part of our observance of the Lord's Supper as we partake of the bread and, and uh, of His blood that He shed for us as we partake of the cup. Think about what is said in the book of Isaiah chapter 52 at verse number 14. I actually read this passage in our Wednesday evening Bible study uh, when we talked about the, um, the, the human semblance and the form, uh, the fact that uh, he had an appearance and a form. But uh, as we look at it tonight, notice again what he said, As many were astonished at you, talking about Jesus, prophecy in regard to him, as many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. You see, Jesus was beaten so severely that people were astonished. That word literally means appalled or, or to bring to devastation. When they looked at him, they, they were devastated at what they saw. Tyndall, in their commentary, say this, The servant's suffering brought such a disfigurement that those who saw said not only, Is this he, but is this human? And Jesus did that for us. And when we look backward, we ought to remember that as we partake of the Lord's Supper every first day of the week. But then not only are we to look backward, folks, we're to look outward. Again, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, this time verse number 26. Again, Paul writes and says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. You know, I, I'm afraid that sometimes we lose sight of the Lord's Supper and, and the fact that it's not just for Christians. Now, now I'm not saying tonight that that it's uh, for everyone in our world to partake of the Lord's Supper, um, that, that it's not just Christians that partake of it. But what I am saying is this, that when we observe the Lord's Supper, the idea, the very concept, and what we do is not just for Christians. You see, it's that we as Christians not only partake of it, but we proclaim by it. In other words... We proclaim the Lord's death, as the Apostle Paul wrote. And so it says to the world, I believe that Jesus Christ is God's Son who died for the world. He died for me and He died for you. And so we have that outward look when we partake of the Lord's Supper. But then not only do we have the backward look and the outward look, we also should have a forward look when we partake of the Lord's Supper. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, at verse 26 again, let's look at it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's Supper, or Lord's death rather, until He comes. 
Look at those last words. Until he comes. You see, the Lord's Supper helps, to, helps all of us to focus on the fact that one day he's coming back. He's going to return to claim his own and receive his own into heaven. Uh, he's going to do that. Uh, the Lord's Supper is, is not only to remind us of that, but it's to be done. It's to be eaten every Lord's Day until He does come back. And so as we look at that, again, we have that forward look. So these are some of the things that the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. There, there are a number of other things that uh, we don't have time to discuss in this lesson tonight. But then let's go on to a second thought in regard to the Lord's Supper. Let's understand tonight that the Lord's Supper is observed in the presence of and communion with Jesus. Now here's some passages that I want you to pay close attention to. In Matthew chapter 26 at verse 29, Jesus said, talking to His disciples on the night when He actually instituted what we know as the Lord's Supper, He said, I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Look at Mark chapter 14 at verse 25. Jesus again speaking said, Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Look at Luke chapter 22 verses 15 through 18. Again Jesus, He said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Now there are several things we learn from these passages that we've just read. And we learn about the Lord's Supper and we learn what the Lord's Supper is. Number one, we, we know that the Lord's Supper is something new. Uh, remember, as we read those, we kept reading that word new. I'll drink it new with you. It's distinct from the Passover meal that, uh, that they were observing at that particular time. He's drinking, doing something new with them. Not only that, but he says, I'll drink it new with you talking about His disciples, the disciples of the first century, as well as the disciples of the 21st century in which you and I live. He said, I will drink it new with you. And then, not only that, but He would do that in the kingdom, the church that has been established. You know, it's not the purpose of this lesson to, to deal with the kingdom and the church and whether they're the same or not, but as we understand it, they definitely are, and so Jesus is talking about partaking of the Lord's Supper with us in the church. And, and in particular, understand that, that it is done with the Lord. I will drink it new with you. You see, the Lord's Supper is a designated place and time when Jesus keeps an appointment with His disciples. He, he comes together and communes with us. And so when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we partake of it in the presence of God, and therefore we're on holy ground. Remember, as we've studied before, we are, we are indeed worshiping God in the, uh, in the beauty of holiness, the splendor of holiness, depending upon which translation you're reading from. And so, again, as we think about the Lord's Supper, it is so so important, not just an emblem that God has given for us to remember upon occasion. There's a purpose behind it. And, and there's something that is, you know, that is so significant about it because you and I are, are meeting with Jesus Himself, communing with Him when we partake of the Lord's Supper. As we begin to close tonight, the story is told about a family who lived on a farm alongside a dirt road. Some of us may recognize, you know, some of those old dirt roads. Some of us may even have grown up on an old dirt road. But the family was growing up or at least living on a farm beside an old dirt road. And it was only on rare occasions that a car would pass by. And, 
and, and you know they didn't see one very often a lot different than it is today you know we see cars just every few seconds one day as one of the young members of the family was crossing the road on his bicycle a car came roaring down the road and struck the boy and killed him that's a tragic thing but then uh, one of the older brothers had some observations that were made and recorded he, he, he said simply this he said later when my father picked up the mangled twisted bike I heard him sob out loud for the first time in my life carried it to the barn and placed it in a spot we seldom used he said his father's terrible sorrow eased with the passing of time but for many years whenever he saw that bike he said tears would stream down his father's face and it's the point that the older brother wanted to make. The older brother continued on. He said, Since then, I've often prayed, Lord, keep the memory of your death as fresh as that to me. Every time I partake of your memorial supper, let my heart be stirred as though he died only yesterday. Folks, the communion, the Lord's Supper is a vital part of our worship to God. And we should never let the communion service become a mere formality, but always experience it with tenderness and, and, and uh, the touching experience that it truly is. It's an act by which we are commanded to worship God. Do this in remembrance of me. It's designed to cause us to look backward, to look outward, and to look upward or forward rather. And, and it's a time when we meet with Jesus and commune with Him and, and with His other disciples as well. The Lord's Supper is a vital, vital part of our worship. Perhaps you'd like to study more on an individual basis about how to become a Christian. Uh, please be sure to contact us if you have an interest and desire to do that. We'd, we'd be more than happy to set up a time uh, to study with you that's convenient for you. And, and if you'd like to do that, you can contact us by emailing us at biblestudy at midwaycfc.com. That's biblestudy at midwaycfc.com. Or you can message us on Facebook at Midway Church Jasper. Send us a private message. Our Facebook page is Midway Church Jasper. Again, if you're able, we would more, be more than happy to see you at one of our Sunday morning services, 9.30 and 10.30. But if you can't attend, be sure to tune in on YouTube at 9.30 to our video worship tool. Uh, it's a virtual worship. It's a, a one-week delayed stream of, uh, of the previous Sunday's worship. You can find the link on Facebook or you can go to YouTube and search for Midway Church of Christ. Again, we invite you to join us this Wednesday for our evening Bible study online. Again, by going to YouTube or going to Facebook. Uh, and that study begins at 6.30. Let's close tonight with a prayer. Holy and righteous Father in heaven, again, we're so thankful that we can approach your throne. Father, we're thankful for your blessings that you bestow upon us. And Father, we pray that we'll never take them for granted, but... Heavenly Father, that we'll always remember that they come from You. Father, again, we're thankful for the blessing of Your church. We're reminded of the fact that You are indeed the object and the aim of our worship. That Heavenly Father, You are the one who sets the standard for our worship. And as You've laid these things out, we know that a part of the worship that we are to give to You each week is to observe the communion, the Lord's Supper. We're to partake of that, to meet with our Lord, to meet with our brothers and sisters in Christ, and to remember Him and remember so many things that are associated with Him. Father, be with those who are sick, those who have undergone surgeries. We pray for them, and if it's possible, Heavenly Father, we pray that they'll be restored to health. And we know, Heavenly Father, that only You can do that we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will guide the hands of the doctors and the nurses that are taking care of these people and family members and others, that the things that need to be done for them to bring them back to health will indeed be done. Father, again, as we come before thee, we pray for our nation. 
We realize, Heavenly Father, that our leaders, some of them, have been diagnosed with uh, the COVID virus. And we pray especially for our president and for his wife and for other members of of his staff who have uh, been diagnosed. Father, we pray that if it's possible, they can be restored to their health. But Father, we have people right around us. And we know that they too are suffering from this uh, uh, this virus. We pray for them that they too can re- restore, be restored to their health. Heavenly Father, help us as we uh, speak to others and live our life before others, that they might be able to see your Son living in us, that they might be drawn closer to you by the things that we do. Continue to watch over us, Father. Forgive us when we sin. And help us as we go through our life to avoid those things that are wrong and do those things that are right. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, hide the glory, revive us again.